In this video, I'll show you how to use the new variable option in Notion Buttons to update specific items in a database. This new feature is great for me as I've been able to update my timesheet template to support teams and track multiple tasks at once. If you've bought my template or followed my previous tutorial, this video will show you how to update it with this new feature. And if you're here to just learn about variables, this will be useful as a real life example to inspire your own workflows. Here's a quick look at my timesheet template. It's a simple time tracking tool for freelancers, teams and businesses. Links to the template, a tutorial to build it yourself and a blog post with copy paste code are all in the description below. I'm using a simplified version of my timesheet template as an example for this video. It has two databases, a task database and a timesheet database, which tracks the time spent on each task. And this is how it works. When you click the start button, it creates a new record in the timesheet database. It does this by adding a start date with the time that you click the button. It relates the timesheet to the task you clicked in and records who clicked the button. This works perfectly to start recording time for a task. Then we have the stop button. When you click it, it adds an end date to timesheets that don't already have one. This works well if you're only recording time for one task at a time. But here's the problem. What if you're working on multiple tasks, say in a team? For example, I'm tracking time for the right blog task and my teammate, Faraz, starts tracking time for the design logo task. Now you can see there are two active timesheets and when I click the stop button, both timesheets get an end date. Not great, but Notion's new variable fixes this. What I want to happen is for the stop button to select only the timesheets related to the task you're clicking in and then select the ones that don't have an end date. This is where the new define variables action can be used. Here's how. To do this, you need to edit the stop button and add the new define variables action. I'll drag it above the existing action since I want to define variables at the beginning. First, name the variable, and I'm calling it the timesheet, but you can call it whatever you want. Then click the formula symbol to open the edit page where you write the formula for the variable. And here's the formula. First select this page. This is the task record you clicked the button in. Then you put a dot to access all properties of the task and select timesheet, which is the relation to the timesheet database. And we're going to use the filter function to find the related timesheets without an end date. To do this, you also use the empty function and in here type current dot and select the end date property. So the formula is returning all the timesheets for the current task that are still recording time. Save this and the variable is ready to use. Now we want to delete this old action and add a new edit pages in action. Under select database, choose the variable we've just created instead of a database. This now edits pages that are returned by the timesheet variable. And for these pages, you want to update the end date property to the time the button was clicked. So select time triggered. And that's it. Now the stop button only stops timesheets related to the current task. Let's test it. Again, I have two team members tracking tasks at the same time. But now when I click on the stop button for my right block task, it only gives an end date to that task's timesheet. So that's the problem solved. If you already use my timesheet template, I've updated it with this functionality, so you can go in and download it again. I'm sure this variable action can be used in many more scenarios, 
I've only just started looking into it and it's already solved my biggest issue, so I'm happy. If you found this helpful, give the video a like and subscribe for more Notion tutorials. Leave a comment if you have any questions or ideas for future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.